sister Masang Christian. And this is by far the most powerful one I've ever been to. And thank you so much for that. And um, my question to you is, as a non-Muslim who believes that every faith uh, advocates peace, and I constantly face uh, many questions from my Christian counterparts when it comes to defending uh, Muslim or uh, Buddhism, I mean, sorry, defending Islam or Buddhism or Hinduism. Um, I sometimes have this question where you say that Islam does not uh, promote terrorism, but all terrorists are Islam. So I, when it comes to that, I have to take a step back and I find it a little bit difficult in defending that because I say that there are Christians who are bigots, there are Christians who promote Christ, uh, terrorism. There are all, all sorts of uh, faiths who have bigots. And what could, I mean, how, how can I give a better answer to this? Yeah, I mean, it's much. Uh, I think what's important for us is to learn and to read and to understand uh, and to see. Uh, what has happened in the world is crime is perpetrated. If it is perpetrated by anyone who is not a Muslim, it's called a crime. And if it's perpetrated by a Muslim, it's called a terrorism. So it's just the word that they've changed. So terrorism, the new definition of it, and I'm sure they might put it in the Oxford Dictionary if they were, if they were truthful, the new definition of terrorism is crime perpetrated by Muslims. You see, so, so that would exclude all non-Muslims. And I say this because we read this, the press. We know what's happening in the, in the media. You know, I'm, I'm quite uh, well versed with what's going on at the moment. And we, are, we feel so prejudiced against when it comes to matters of this nature. You know, you have McVeigh. He is not called a terrorist. You have anyone who's Christian. You know, the Sinn Féin, for example. You have the Lord's Resistance Army. You have the Christians, the Tutsis and the Hutus in, in Rwanda, for example. The ethnic cleansing that's happened all, in a lot of countries. These people have massacred millions of people. But they're not called terrorists. Why? Because there's, there, there, there is some form of a... a you, know, you know, normally people say, don't... Uh, uh, don't just feel pity on yourself by saying things. But there definitely is some form of an agreement to tarnish the image of Islam. And I never used to believe this. I used to think, you know what, these theories and all that, they're wrong. But one thing that is quite clear is, Islam is still the fastest growing religion. You know that. I, I don't know if you're aware of it. And this people cannot understand. They asked me yesterday or the day before, why is Islam the fastest growing religion still? And I tell you the reason that I feel, having spoken to a lot of the women, because the bulk of those who are entering the fold of Islam are actually women. When they feel that we've now been enslaved in such a cunning way that we don't realize we're enslaved. They used to be naked a long time ago. You know, Robert Mugabe is the president of Zimbabwe. So he said, or, you know, we all know that he stands for morals and values and he's very strict when it comes to certain things and he doesn't want to budge when it comes to certain issues, right? Now, I'm saying this in a good way that many, many years ago, the colonialists came to Africa, they found them dressed in uh, feathers and leathers and skins and they had spears and, you know, the traditional African dress. They told them, you are backward, you need to clothe, cover yourself. So they covered themselves. 200 years later, they told them, you are backward. Remove the clothing once again. So, so now when they are going back to, dressed, to being dressed in less than what they used to be dressed a long time back, they are being told you are liberated. And yet in the middle, they were honestly saying dress, because when you dress, you are liberated. So what is it? So what, what's happening right now is the women who are becoming fed up of being enslaved by the makeup industry, for example, so enslaved that they cannot even walk out of the house without having spent 400 ringgates on the face. It's a reality. And they can't walk out they can't, without this and without that. They start thinking to themselves, hang on, how come we've gone back to the Stone Age where we've taken out all our clothing and we're dressing for a, for a, for a, for a male-dominated environment to soothe the eyes of the males? There was a time when we wouldn't dare tell a woman, you're looking gorgeous. I'm talking about 40, 50 years ago. No one would have come to my mother and say, oh, you're looking lovely. She would say, hey, shut up. You know? But today you say, you're looking lovely. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow, we'll actually put it up, we like it. Oh, someone acknowledged me, you know. 
Because it's all become this issue. So people start feeling this. And what happens is they realize, let me cover up. Let me become truly liberated. People must know me for my contribution to the nation. People must know me for my uh, service to the rest of humanity. People must know me for my character and conduct, not just what I look like. So what happens is, they, they, when, when the people who studied what's going on on the globe saw that as much as Islam is being portrayed in a negative way, it's still growing so fast. To be honest, words started coming out that would only depict Muslims. So terrorism is an act done by Muslims. Like they say, there was a man, you know, for example, it's just an example that's given online. And I've read it where they, the, a man saved the dog, right? So people said, oh, this man saved the dog. What did he do? He, he, the dog was on the highway and he ran after the dog and he saved the dog and he actually brought it to safety. So there was an article saying, wow, man saves dog and so on and so forth. And then they found out he was a Muslim. And what did they say? They, t they, they then put a headline to say, a terrorist Muslim disturbs the peace of a dog trying to cross the road. Come on, come on, come on. Now this is just an example, obviously, it may also be hypothetical, but at the same time, it goes to show that even the Muslims understand that that word terrorism is abused. Look, we are approximately one and a half to two billion Muslims on the globe. If Islam was actually a terroristic religion, nobody would exist. They wouldn't exist because... Ah, can I stand up? You are a non-Muslim. Agreed, my brother? Do you feel safe in this room? MashaAllah. You feel secure, don't you? We're all Muslims around you. Remember that? <laughs> MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. I think I've just made my point. Shukran, shukran. Thank you so much.